Hey guys, Element of the Ride here, and before we get started, I just want to thank you guys so much for 10 subscribers. It truly means a lot to me, and I know at the time of this uploading, I have 11, or currently right now, getting ready to upload it, I have 11. That could change. But, um, I just want to thank you guys so much for tagging along in my YouTube journey, and just, like, being there, and subscribing, and, you know watching my videos so thank you very much for that and I have some cool stuff planned for my 10 25 maybe 50 or 100 subscriber specials but for this subscriber special I felt it was most appropriate to do my top 10 roller coasters because it's 10 subscriber special you, you get the connection so I just wanted to do that and just thank you guys so much, thanks again so much, and now let's get into the video. But before we do, I do want to mention one thing really, really quick. This list only includes Cedar Point and Kings Island roller coasters, with two exceptions at Cedar Point being Top Little Dragster and Gatekeeper, because I was not able to ride those, and I'm probably not going to be able to ride Top Little Dragster again this year, so yeah. But I hopefully will ride Gatekeeper, and that will be in my new top 10. And one note to think before, like, you know, like, commenting and stuff. Um, my top 10 is always changing. I am always changing around, thinking what I like best, and so it's always changing. And I'll try and keep you updated when major changes come, but if I'm just flipping around my numbers, like, I flip around Banshee and Raptor a lot, because I change my mind on what I like. But, yeah, so... Those might change a lot. Um, a lot of things might change, and I don't like keep a list every day and like, wake up and change it. So, you know, every once in a while, you might get an updated video. I might take this video and edit it and, you know, just replace some stuff. But otherwise, this is my official top 10 as of right now. And when I ride Nori Coasters, I will give you updates, like I said. As of now, this is my top 10, so let's get into the video. At my number 10 spot is Magnum XL200. And this is a weird and odd coaster to make my top 10 out of all the roller coasters I've ridden. I don't know how, I don't know why, but it is a good ride, and I, I didn't mind it as much as some people may have. Um, it is a, a little bit rough because, you know, with old steel roller coasters, they get rough. It is a record breaker, and if I list every record, all my Cedar Point roller coasters break on this, then I would be sitting here for about 20 minutes just talking about record breaking roller coasters. Therefore, I am not going to mention the records they break, except Millennium Force was the first Giga coaster, Top Dill Drags you won't see was the first Strata, and Magnum XL was the first Hyper. So, most people are okay with this ride's first half, and it's nothing much, it's nothing memorable, but when you hit the turnaround, which is extremely long and drawn out and unnecessary, I don't like the turnaround as much as some people would, but I do like just like being drawn out and banked to the side a little bit, That that's pretty cool. Um, otherwise, the turnaround isn't really that good. You turn around, you hit a turned airtime hill, you really don't get much airtime, you go through a tunnel and then boom, boom, boom thighs hurt because of airtime. Yeah, it's crazy at the end, and that puts it at my top 10 spot. I'm not going to do much explaining for each roller coaster because of time, and if my videos get too long, they take long to upload, and sometimes they don't always upload the easiest. So, moving on. At my number 9 spot, I have Banshee, and this is questionable for me because it's the one I'm thinking I'm most likely to change. Um, just depending on what I think I like better, like I said earlier, really um, makes my decision on which coaster I like better. And I have talked about Banshee and Raptor in a different video, so if you want to go check that one out, um, go to my channel and look for the Banshee vs Raptor thing. Um, it's a good video. And I talk about why the reasons I like Raptor or Banshee better than Raptor or Banshee. So, 
um, Banshee is a great ride. It's a B and M invert at Kings Island. My first invert, not my first inverting coaster. That was Flight of Fear, and I wish it wasn't, but it was. So Banshee is great. Banshee is smooth. It is starting to get a little bit of a rattle, but it's gonna be a couple years before it gets the full on B and M rattle. Maybe a few years, not a couple years. It's gonna be a while. It is getting a small rattle, but, you know, it's very high speed. Not like really high speed for like non enthusiasts who don't know what high speed is. But it has speed and smooth transitions, and that is something I like about Banshee. I also like this zero G roll, it gives some great hang time. Overall, Banshee is just a great ride and was a great addition to the park. And I really like it, and that is why it is at my number 9 spot. Moving at my number 8 spot, I have Mystic Timbers. That was a very long and drawn out name, and that was not what I wanted it to be. So, Mystic Timbers is a GCI wooden roller coaster, and if it wasn't for Cedar Point, okay, just... If I hadn't gone to Cedar Point and Orion, and Orion hadn't been built, this would be top three. Maybe first or second. Maybe even top two. But I just want to mention in this one before we get any further in the video, I had Kings Island good roller coasters ranked pretty high up until I went to Cedar Point and realized what a roller coaster can be. And I, okay, so there's two videos I want to do off of this video. One is, is Mystic Timbers a disappointment? Like the shed and all that. And if you don't want me to spoil that, don't watch that video. Um, yeah, and, um, like my experience at Cedar Point and how my views on Kings Island have changed now that I've been to Cedar Point. But anyways, getting back to Mystic Timbers, this is a great ride with some great moments of airtime. Um, the shed may be disappointing to you, but to me it is not, and in another video I will cover that, but as of now, I am not, because it is a little controversial, and I want to keep this video as non-controversial as I can. But otherwise, it is a great roller coaster. It does have a little bit of good rat laterals. Um, it has some airtime, like I said, um, towards the back. Um, if you haven't seen my Element of Mystic Timbers video, go check that out. Um, it explains everything about Mystic Timbers, so if you want to go see that, go look at that. And this is all I have to say about Mystic Timbers, so moving on. At my number 7 spot, I have Raptor at Cedar Point. This is Cedar Point's b and Invert. Um, it is one of the older inverts, and I apparently like older inverts. I didn't know that, but older B&M roller coasters, they do get a little rough. I don't like Rogaru though, because that's too rough and not as good. But Raptor is just the old B&M qualities into a modern coaster. It's not really modern, like I said, it is old, but it seems to be modern, and it has the old B&M qualities, such as whippiness. I don't even know if that's a word, but that's how I would describe it. Um, the first part isn't that whippy. The Cobra Bowl is a little bit, but you really start to feel it on the corkscrews. And that's my favorite part of the ride, I really love the corkscrews. Um, after you go out of the mid-course, you are just thrown out, like, just insane. You just roll over and do the corks through, like, like, really fast, and it's really fun. And I like Raptor because of that, and a lot of people do, but there's some that don't, and I'm the kind of person that does, but I don't like old wooden roller coasters that are rough. So... This is one of the only few older roller coaster types that I like, just because of the old B&M qualities. Now, they've kind of switched from, like, whippy to smooth, and, like I
like I said about Banshee, if you haven't seen the Banshee or Raptor video, go check that out where I talk about all of the stuff that goes into why I like Raptor better and why B&M has changed from their old style to their new style. But moving on. At my number six spot, I have Val Raven, Cedar Points, B&M, Dive Coaster. And before you go in the comments and be like, wow, you have Raptor up or below Val Raven, I do, but I'm gonna see this probably one time and then probably change my mind about it. So now that there are being more and more dive coasters built, it's not a rare experience anymore. Um, when it was a rare experience, I really loved Val Raven because like what coaster at Kings Island gives you the experience or the sensation of dangling over the edge before you drop. So it was very smooth. I really liked it, but I'm just going to say this now. I don't see this staying in the spot it is for much longer. Although it is smooth and the reason I liked it so much was because it's a different thing than I've ever experienced. It's my first dive coaster. But now that a lot of parks are getting dive coasters, I feel like it's gonna fall down because it's not a rare, a rare experience anymore. So I highly, I would highly um, expect this to fall down in my list, if you know what I mean. Moving on. In my number five spot, I have Diamondback, and I have to start speeding up these so I don't, you know, run out of time and storage, and I won't be able to post it. So, Diamondback is my first being on Hyper, my first Hyper coaster. It used to be very smooth. It is starting to get a rattle. It is beginning to get rough, but it still delivers, and it delivers a lot of airtime. And I really like Diamondback's airtime. Uh, again. This is another highly controversial ride with Orion, and Orion, I will explain, I think I've already explained that in a different video, but I just feel like Orion is better than Diamondback, and if you want another video going in depth about that, let me know in the comments down below. But I feel like Diamondback is my number five, and that all the coasters above it are much better than it not much better it's very close between the next coasters but diamondback is an overall great ride and just because it's lower on my rankings than it might be on yours does not mean i don't like it at my number four spot i have orion at king's island um a lot of people look at this coaster as a disappointment not me that is not the case for me and i believe that is partially because of i have not ridden fury or Leviathan. So, there is two videos of Orion on my channel, and if you want to learn more about Orion, look it up or watch those videos. Those are both great sources to find out more. But the reason I like Orion is for two things. One of those things is the speed hill, which gives great airtime. And I know, like, airtime and Orion, some people can't put those words together, but I can. and. That is why it is in front of Diamondback, but just like I said, my thing changes constantly depending on what I like, and this may not stay there for long. I have a feeling Diamondback could pull through and be on top, but as of now, Orion is my number four spot, and I kind of, I don't know, let me know what you guys think about this, but moving on. I'm at number three spot, I have Maverick, and I really loved Maverick, like, a lot, and it, I, okay, let me just explain this all, so, on my first ride of Maverick, it was at night, there was bugs, and I think it was so amazing, I didn't get to experience every part of Maverick, and I feel like that... I need to get a lot more rides on this to experience the full package that Maverick has to offer. And once I get a few more rides on this, I feel like it's going to be number two. And if you don't know what number two is already, then I don't know. But 
I feel like it could beat my number two spot, and I feel like it will. After a few more rides, this thing is insane, and I feel like, just like looking over this list, I feel like it could change any day or after my next ride on Maverick, because I only got one ride on Maverick, and I know that's kind of like, wait, how'd you get one ride? We were trying to get all the rides in at Cedar Point, and the only ride we got to ride twice was Steel Vengeance, so... I would ride Steel Vengeance over Maverick twice, just because, you know, everyone told it was the best roller coaster in the world, so I took my second roller coaster ride on Steel Vengeance rather than Maverick. But don't get me wrong, Maverick is a great ride, and I can't wait to get more rides on this and see where I rank it in my rankings. Now at my number two spot, I have Millennium Force, and the reason I ranked Millennium Force at number two is because of the drop mainly. Although, there was a little bit of airtime on the hills, a lot of people will say that this is a forceless ride. I don't think it's the, like, least forceful ride, but it is a great ride overall. That first drop is amazing. After all, it is the first Giga Coaster, so it was pretty revolutionary for its time. Um, it's, it's overall an amazing ride, but I do see in the future few rides ranking higher than this and right in, as of now I really liked it and it was really cool the one thing I liked about it I was scared at first going on because the restraints like how can you have like that small of a restraint on a giga coaster but now that I think about it I kind of like being like open on a ride and those restraints are perfect they're comfortable they have the perfect place for your hands so Millennium Force overall is a great ride, not like horrible theming, it's like themed to its future itself, but other than that, it's a great ride, and that's why it's ranked at my number two spot. And if you haven't guessed number one already, yeah, I don't know, because I've only been to Cedar Point and Kings Island, so you kind of have to guess my number one, and you probably know. Number one, Steel Vengeance. Um, airtime, 10 out of 10. Smoothness, 10 out of 10. Restraints, 6 out of 10. It's just, like, the best ride ever, except for the, 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 the restraints. They hurt your thighs when you get airtime. But, that's because it has great airtime. And, I mean, it's an RMC. You cannot go wrong with an RMC. So, this is really a great ride. Um, if you haven't ridden the Steel Vengeance, go ride it. It is my number one. I got to ride it twice, once in the daytime, once at night. I much prefer night, and I much prefer towards the back, but front row is a good experience too. I'm assuming that I didn't get front row. I got near the back and then towards the front, so. Really, it's up to you to decide what you think is best, but one of the best things on this ride is the outer bank. It is some amazing airtime, and I really want to get back on this ride and just experience the real steel vengeance. Because when I went, I wasn't that scared of roller coasters, but I still had that fear just inside of me, so I wouldn't like let myself get airtime. I did get some, I just didn't get as much as you would if you were an enthusiast who wanted airtime. So, when I go back this year, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and get all the ride experiences at the best they can be, and not like best they can be, but like try and get it the best I can do to get the best experience on that ride. And I'm excited to go back to Cedar Point this year, so that's going to be it for this video. Again, thank you so much for 10 subscribers, and... I can't thank you guys enough, and but we're going to see where this channel goes and takes me, so thanks for joining the journey along my YouTube channel with roller coasters called Element of the Ride, but if you like this video, go check out my others, and please consider subscribing. That's going to be it, and this is Element of the Ride, signing off.